today we're going to do an art gallo taco. Anybody remember what gallo taco translates to Japanese? Fish rubbing! Wow! Hi, my name is Joe Mullins, and today I'm here at Grimes Elementary School in Mount Vernon, New York, and I'm in the class of Ms. Brown. And we are going to do a workshop on gallo taco, which translates to fish rubbing. I'm going to give you a very brief description and a demonstration of how to make a gallo taco print. Put the teeth on that. Those are this fish's teeth. It loves shrimp, but it'll, fit, it will actually eat anything that it can fit in its mouth. Come on, you can touch it. Gallo taco is a Japanese word. Gallo translates to fish. Taco translates to rubbing. So really, what we're making is a fish rubbing. This is all the way from the Pacific. This art form started as a folk art. Nice All the way to this tail. Look at that tail. Okay. Now you want to get some of the teeth because we really want to get the teeth on this arm, right? We're also going to talk a little bit about science, a little bit about the environment, a little bit about the local waterways, and a little bit about basic fish anatomy. how they survive, how they interact with the other sea creatures, and what is eating what in our waterways. The condition of our waterways, and quite frankly, how to catch a fish. Oh, look at that. Look at that beast. The fishermen developed this artwork basically as a record keeping, so when they got back, they could show their friends and family what they pulled out of the sea that day. Because back in the mid-1800s, the Japanese fishermen were going further and further out to sea. They were catching more and more exotic animal, uh, uh, sea creatures, and they wanted to share this with their friends and family. And so this is the artwork that came from that. This is the art style that came from that. Guy on top, it's a fish running. It's a very simple form of nature printing. Uh, we do it with second graders, we do it with kindergartners, we do it all the way straight up to high school. Okay, the basic ingredients for this is a paintbrush, ink or paint, and a funky looking fish. So, very simply, this is acrylic paint. The traditional prints that the fishermen made were uh, using sumi ink on silk. It's very important to get a very thin, thin coating of paint on the fish. And then what you do is you take the cardboard out that has all the paint on it. Hold on to that. Don't forget to wash your hands. You have to on your hands now. And you lay it down on a nice clean copy board. And take that paper very simply, very, very simple. Roll it out and just rub gently. And you can see the image come up on the reverse side very, very quickly. And that's basically it. A little bit of rubbing, just like it says, fish rubbing. See, that one's a nice print. It came very, very, very thin, thin layer. So it really creates a lot of detail. This is a very interesting fish. Some people call it the most important fish in the sea. It's a herring that actually filters out all of the algae out of the water. This is called the Pacific Cutlass. It's very popular in the Korean neighborhoods. And I got this in a Korean fish market. As you see, can see, as we discuss in the classroom, this is a predator fish. But how do I know that? Look at the size of the eye. Look where the eye is. It's looking straight ahead. Look at the size of this mouth. Look at the teeth on this fish. Look at the teeth on that. We talked about how those fish interact with other fish, their habitat in Long Island Sound and in the Hudson River, and we talk about their life cycles. And it's very, very important that we talk about the anatomy of the fish and how you can really tell what a fish does for a living and how it survives in the sea by its shape. 
The program is 50% artwork and it's 50% science environmental. Some of the main questions that I get from the students, when I, especially when I talk about the anatomy of the fish, I have the fish right with me. We talk about the dorsal fin, the pelvic fin, and we also talk about the fish gills. The kids are absolutely amazed that this is how the fish breathes. And they're absolutely amazed when they find out that the fish actually breathe oxygen just like we do. Why is this piece of artwork important? Hopefully, when they keep this piece of artwork, when they, when they get this home and they look at this later on, they're going to remember the five main fins of the fish. They're going to remember how Long Island Sound was formed and how the Hudson River was formed and the importance of the Hudson River in our history and the development of our country. Oh, wonderful. This is a really wonderful class. This is the same class that worked with Arts My Sister last year. So they kind of know the routines. They are very receptive to the artists. I think that's beautiful. The light is coming through. And this has been a really special experience. It's even for me. I've never done this before. I've always shied away from it before. Yeah, anyway. it. <laughs> so yes, yes. It was fun and it was educational for me. So the anatomy of the fish will tell you what it does for a living and how it survives in the sea. If the kids walk away with that basic knowledge of the five fins and the importance of those five fins and what those fins can tell you about the fish, we've hit a home run.